Little guy, let's go over the information that we have so far. Oh, uh, right. The revolutionary, Stephen Eldred, was not, in fact, the raging bomber. That's right. The real bomber placed an explosive inside a stuffed animal. And then sent it to you, Dr. Kimishima. Let's trace the delivery back to its source immediately. If we can find out where that package came from, we'll find the bomber and then... There's no need for that. Huh? W why? Hmm. Don't you think there's someone much more suspicious? Wh who? I believe that the person who is most likely to be the bomber is... Huh? Don't tell me. Indeed. The person who delivered the package is most suspicious. Then the raging bomber personally handed you the bomb? Isn't that... too dangerous? I have proof. I got carbon dust on my hand when I signed for the delivery. That's because the delivery person said that the digital pad was broken. Aiden and Steven, the other victims that we examined, both of them also had carbon dust on their fingers. I see. That explains why the carbon was only on their dominant hands. Yes. In other words, the bomber killed the other two victims in the same way that I was targeted. The fact that the delivery person was female also points toward her culpability. What do you mean? Uh, don't you get it? Let me ask you this then. How did the bomber hide her true identity? She hired Stephen Eldred to make the bomb threats for her. But even this was a trap. That's because... Yes, she let Stephen's voice go out unprocessed on purpose. What? Us to think everything she did was an act and we were fooled we were all led to believe that the raging bomber was a young man I see if that woman is the bomber then it all makes sense indeed on the other hand there's another mystery that we can't solve just yet that is The bomber was using the revolutionary character as a cover to protect herself. Why, then, would she kill him? Little guy. Huh? What? What happened to Alyssa's house? Oh, unfortunately it completely burned. Then the building collapsed. It's useless as a potential crime scene now. I see. Then I'm going to investigate the revolutionary's room one more time. Yes, but now I know what I'll be seeing. You look into those deposits. The ones into Stephen Eldred's accounts? Okay, I'll get started on that right away. I'm going to catch her. That's my only way to atone for what happened. I've investigated this room before. I can't just rush around now and expect to find new information. What we need now is more information about the raging bomber. If the same method was used to deliver the bomb here as was used to get the other bomb to me, the area with the most clues would be... Here it is, the delivery form. If the bomber did send this, there's a chance that this form has some important evidence. That would be...
Right. We may be able to lift some fingerprints from it. This is a human hair. It's about 40 centimeters long. No, it couldn't possibly be the revolutionaries. This needs further investigation. woman delivered the bombs to both of us in the same fashion, then she would have left footprints at the entrance. Stephen was the revolutionary and was male. If the delivery person was female, her footprints would definitely be different. Let's look for footprints that differ from Stephen's. This footprint is definitely different in size and pattern from the others. Let's collect this print and send it for analysis. Tell me anything about this hair, little guy. Sure, give me a moment. Uh, huh. What's the matter? Well, this hair is dyed black, but it's actually a red hair. Red hair? Can you tell if it belonged to the bomber? No, I'd need some DNA from the bomber to compare it to. Of course, but there's a good chance that this hair does belong to the bomber. Huh? Why is that? Oh, this is hardly conclusive evidence, but here's something you may not know, little guy. Only 2-3% to of people in this country are true redheads. It isn't a common color at all. So, how is this related to this case? Think about it. That hair's been dyed, hasn't it? Right, but... If that hair is the bomber's, as I suggest, what reason would she have to dye it? Um, it would be... That's right. Having red hair is an obvious identifying feature. If there happened to be any witnesses, her identity would be easy to discover. Isn't it plausible to think that this might be why the bomber would dye her hair black? I see. That hypothesis does make sense. The dye used seems to be a temporary coloring agent as well. Hmm. So the dye is meant to be washed out. If that's the case, she could change her hair color with every delivery to create conflicting witness accounts. That would make her hair part of her costume as well. Yes, but until we can prove that hair belongs to her, this is all just speculation. I know. We need something to match her DNA with in order to do that. It's a decent theory, anyway. Let's keep gathering what information we can. Got it. I'll let you know immediately if anything else comes up. I found this. Can you analyze it, little guy? Huh. A delivery receipt. Don't tell me. It's very likely. It hadn't even crossed my mind until now. Right. I'll send it to the lab, so it'll take a while. Uh, Dr. Kimishima, the results of the analysis on that delivery form have come in. Did they find anything? Sure did. There were two sets of fingerprints on the paper. One of them is Stephen Eldred, the revolutionary. 
me be the recipient. The other set belongs to somebody else. Well, common sense dictates that they'd have to belong to. Let's not start jumping to any conclusions. We need to find out who left those fingerprints. Huh, yes, those two can be placed together. Little guy, could I bother you for a moment? Yes, of course. What is it? I want you to look at the fingerprints on the delivery form Stephen and I were presented with. Compare any prints you find that don't belong to either Stephen Eldred or myself. No problem. I'll just be a moment. Hmm. What did you find? Are there any matches? A complete match. There's no mistake. These are from the same person. Good. This is proof of another important fact. Both forms have two sets of prints. One from the recipient, and another from... That's right. The other set of prints is from the person who delivered the package. If the fingerprints match on both forms, then the person who delivered the bomb to the revolutionary was... Let me guess. She doesn't exist, right? Uh, right. But we've contacted all the delivery companies that work in this area. None of them can confirm having an employee that fits our description. And of course, none of them have any records of a package being sent to you that day either. Do you think the woman making the deliveries is the raging bomber? Hmm, I can't be sure yet. She might be another person being used like the revolutionary was. We'll figure that out as we continue with the investigation. Right. In any case, we'll need to keep that woman in mind. How about the fingerprints? Did you compare them to anything in the FBI's criminal database? Of course I ran them through the system. No matches, though. If that woman is the raging bomber, she's a complete newbie. That's an awful thought. Someone with no criminal record at all. And she's already killed four people with these bombs. That seems to be the case. This might turn out to be one tough murder spree to end. As long as she doesn't blow you up, it'll be okay. You might want to avoid saying things like that in the future. Oh. Oh. Uh, sorry. I... Anyway, we've figured out how she was delivering the bombs. Yes, let's try summarizing what we know of the events in this case. First, the bomber prepared a bluff to hide behind while she committed the crimes. That bluff was... Yes, the revolutionary, Stephen Eldred. The bomber had Eldred make the bomb threats over the phone. She had him use his own voice with absolutely no processing to attempt to conceal it. Because of this, the bomber misled us into believing that the killer was male. On the other hand, the bomber used the names of people close to the targets to send the packages. She did that to make her targets feel less suspicious about the deliveries, right? Yes. All the bombs were set to explode in close proximity to the target. It's likely that what triggered the explosion would have been... Indeed, if the bomb was set to go off when the package was opened, it would explain the wound patterns. Still, that's not what she did in my case. She used a time bomb for me. That does seem odd now that you bring it up. Why would she do that? It makes a lot of sense if you think about it. What's that supposed to mean? Don't you get it? It's because... How could I do that? Let me ask you, investigator. If someone assisting the FBI appears in a tabloid, 
What's your by the book response? Um, we'd increase security around you to prevent the killer from striking at you.